In this video, I'm going to explain all nine input triggers in Unreal Engine in under three minutes. Input triggers are a part of Unreal's enhanced input system for defining the inputs of your game. You can use input triggers to define specific rules for what will cause your input actions to actually trigger, such as having to press multiple buttons or keys at once, having to press buttons in a certain order, having to hold a button for a specific amount of time, and so on. The input trigger not only determines what causes an input action to be considered in the triggered state, but also what causes the input action to be in the other possible states as well, including started, ongoing, cancelled, and completed. For every tick of gameplay that an input action is considered to be in a particular state, the output execution pin for that state will fire on the input action's event listener node. Alright, so let's get started. The default trigger is the down trigger. The down trigger causes the action to be in the triggered state for every tick of gameplay in which the specified input is being held down. The action will also be in the started state during the first tick that the input is held down. The action will be in the completed state during the first tick after the input has been released. The pressed trigger causes the action to be in the started and triggered states when the input is first held down and then in the completed state immediately after. The input must then be released and pressed again in order to trigger again. The release trigger causes the action to be in the started and ongoing states when the input is first held down. In the ongoing state for every tick of gameplay that the input remains held down. In the triggered state as soon as the input is released. And then in the completed state. The hold trigger causes the action to be in the started and ongoing states when the input is first held down, and then in the ongoing state for every tick of gameplay that the input remains held down, up to the amount of seconds specified by the hold time threshold property. Once that amount of time is reached, the action will be in the triggered state for every tick of gameplay that the input remains held down, and then in the completed state once the input is released. If the input is released before the specified amount of time is reached, the action will go into the cancelled state instead. The hold and release trigger is just like the hold trigger, except that not only must the player hold down the input for the hold time threshold, but they must then release the input before the action will be triggered. The pulse trigger is also like the hold trigger, except that instead of the action being in the triggered state for every tick of gameplay that the input is held down, it will only be in that state for a single tick. Every however many seconds is specified by the interval property. So with interval set to 1, it will be in the triggered state for a single tick every second, as long as the input is held down. The tap trigger is used to specify that an input must be pressed and released within a certain amount of time in order for the action to trigger. The corded action trigger is actually meant to work with multiple input actions. It's used in situations where you want to require one or more other input actions to be currently triggered in order for the current input action to trigger. And finally, the combo trigger is used when you want a certain sequence of actions to be performed in combination in order to trigger the action. Alright, so that was all 9 input triggers in Unreal Engine in under 3 minutes. If you're interested in learning more about input triggers, or the enhanced input system in general, check out the Players and Input section of my Unreal Engine Beginners course. You can find links in the description below.